Morning everyone. Uh, pretty busy today. So you hear in the background there's a generator running. Uh, who, uh, when we were putting the water lines in we used that. The fuel in it's pretty old so we went ahead and I'm gonna run the rest of that fuel out and then uh, clean that fuel tank up a little bit just to make sure I don't have any gunk in there. And uh, it was just hard to start. It's usually not like that. And then uh, we're going to drive some more fence posts. I have several others that need to be put in. I already fed the chickens, the chicks that are in here. And then later today, we are going to um, pick up a dog. Um, the dogs that we're gonna pick up are just, they were abandoned at somebody's farm and they need a home. So we're gonna pick one up and uh, needless to say, they're not gonna replace Betsy nor Bella, but they're gonna be part of our family. So we're gonna do that later today. And uh, yeah, that'll probably be the rest of our day. Oh, and we're gonna plant the garden today. So stick, stick around and see what we can get done. Oh, if you haven't, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. There you have it, kids. Plenty of pencils for next year's school year. Uh, we'll put these in here. Probably, I've got CQ tomorrow. So, probably put them in Monday. And, yeah. On another note, I really do hope everyone's staying, staying uh, healthy. Those of you that live in town, uh, I do feel sorry for you. It's, I'm sure it's kind of rough being cooped up in a house or even in a small area. So our thoughts and prayers are out with everybody. Uh, yeah, just want everybody to stay safe, that's all. And uh, I'm gonna go water the sheep and then we are gonna get ready to leave. The, uh, see if we can go find our new family member. So, well, uh, yeah, see you soon. Morning everyone, garden good to go just like we talked about in the last video uh and it we nailed the weather uh what we thought the weather was going to do opposed to the forecast it rained quite a bit and i know you can't tell it right now but it's actually too wet for us to do anything in there so we made the right choice i'm going ahead and just pushing through and planting so this is how you should be starting your day off though you get your good dog in She's a good dog. Uh, but today we're gonna start dividing up this paddock. So this one will get divided into three. So it'll have one, two more fences added in here to make three sections. So I'm gonna sharpen the uh, chainsaw up because I gotta sharpen the end, make some more pencils, and then we'll be ready to head out there. Safety first, kiddos. Make sure you wear eye protection. I'm bad at it, but I still advocate for it. Think about it this way. Right, it's it'd be a, it'd be a rough time either way, whether you're born blind or you go blind later. I think it would be harder if I was born able to see and then I lost my sight because that's a sense that I relied on heavily for a lot of things I've done. So just think about that. Nice little Dremel tool, basically tells you your angle and everything. Three sixteenth uh, inch diameter stone to sharpen my chain with. It works very well. All right, so there's two nuts on the side of any chainsaw, pretty much. And those are attached to a stud that holds the bar. Oops. If you loosen those, they don't have to be real loose. Just loosen them, and then you can tighten the screw on the side. The screw is an adjustment, and it'll make it to where you can tighten your chain back up. Now, the chain can get loose from a few things. It could actually be stretched from hitting, in our case, probably from hitting fence. Or it could be simply that you didn't have it tightened down well, and it simply, the adjustment worked its way backwards. You do not want it too tight. You get it too tight, you'll know because it won't spin freely, right? So this still spins freely, a little loose, right? If I pulled them both out though, I wouldn't be able to get the bottom of the 
or the top in this case of that guide i wouldn't be able to get it past so that's what we're looking for Not bad for 11 years old. Hello everyone. So now we're out here, we're measuring because we want to get it really close to where our posts are down there. So we measured the distance from our hay field to where our post is down there. We're gonna do the same thing over here to get them close to square as we can. Um, we're actually going to start the other way. Well, we're going to start from that end. Oh, we're going to walk down there. Gotcha. Miscommunications. Oh, good girl, Freedom. Good girl. You went potty. Outside. That's important. Yeah, when you bring them in the house, it's important they go potty outside. She's actually been pretty good. Until we came back home. She went to work with me. She was there all night. All day and all night. Didn't have any accidents and then oh, she had an accident. As soon as I got pretty much shortly after I got home this morning. Um, sorry about the wind by the way. We're working on I've got something coming that's gonna fix it, but it's just not here yet. So everything's kind of tied up right now. But shortly you'll have less or no wind noise, hopefully. So we're at 150 feet right here. So I'll go out another 130 and that'll give us our 280 that we wanted for this pad. And that's Mr. Steven right there. Good neighbor of ours. Close. We're good. So, all I did was look at the other one, look at how the posts were lined up. And I was like, ah, oh, we'll just go this way and see what happens. So, I was probably off by about 10 feet. That's not too bad considering it's 13, or no, sorry, it's 750 some odd feet to where that center fence is. But not bad. That's a pretty good guess. Good job. Nailed it. You might wind more than Bella did. Lunch break. <laughs> God, thank you for this day. And thank you for this food. And thank you for everything you do for us in the world. Mm -hmm. I ask that you be with the world and help them to fight this COVID fear and get rid of it. Thank you for the hands that prepared it. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Chrissy's mom was nice and brought us lunch. So we're going to measure and we're going to put another gate in right here. So it's about 12 feet. If Christy had this on. Right. So about a 12 foot gate is going to go in here. We're doing that because occasionally <clears throat> we will rotate them through the yard, especially if we have a drop going on and they're really hurting for grass. Shouldn't be happening, but just in case, we'd rather have it in case we need it. Don't you yell at me. No, she's crying. Same thing. She said you locked me on the side by side. I can't hide. Anyway, so we'll put a uh, gate in right there, and then we'll be moving on to the next one. I have an idea with this bolt and a thousand plus feet of 550 cord.
All right, so next morning, let's check fluids real quick. Make sure they're good. It's definitely good. Other side. Anyways, got about 120 or so T posts on there. We're going to take them out there and get at least a couple of the easy paddocks. Hopefully, get them done this morning real quick. And then uh, we will see how far we get. The wooded one is going to be a big, well, not a pain. Well, this is difficult. Not really a pain. It's just going to be more time consuming. And we're still full. I always check my hydraulic fluid. Um, well, you should check it anyways, but especially with this post driver on here, because like we talked about before, it leaks. So I don't want to burn up a hydraulic pump. A hydraulic pump, <clears throat> so no matter what size tractor you have, the hydraulic pump is probably one of the most expensive repairs um, for one single component. The one on that tractor is like, $4,500 to $6,000 depending on who you get it from. The one for this tractor is actually only about $1,200, but either way, I don't want to spend that much on either one of them if I don't need to. So let's get this started. All right, so you can see this is not very bright and it's not going to stand out, but we're going to be in the tractor and we have an idea of where a straight line is with it. So we're gonna put this down. Well, I'm gonna tie it to this post and then I'm gonna drive that way with it. Now, if you're thinking what I'm thinking of, oh man, that's a lot of feet to, to roll back up. Well, I have a plan for that too. Put this bolt through there, tighten the nut down, and then I'll use the impact to basically turn it uh, counterclockwise to roll this back up. See if it works. I'm sure you probably can't see this on this camera. It's not going to pick up. It's not as sensitive as our eyes. But I've got this off the ground all the way from here to that first uh, T post. And that first T post to the, I can see the first T post and I can see my wood post, my corner post right behind it. So I'm pretty confident about them being straight. Over here, I'm actually, it's straight from this T-post straight to my corner post by the road. Obviously straight, so we'll move the T-post so you can see I was off by probably about two feet, maybe a little more on that one. And then over here, I was off by at least a foot and a half. So if you can get it to where it's in the center and it's elevated high enough that you can uh, pull this tight or whatever string you're using, pull it tight. I do recommend, uh, Oh, the elastic string you can buy for like if you're doing a, a home or something like that, like if you're doing concrete, you can stretch it real tight to get your, uh, your level for your uh, like concrete or, or if you're working on a deck. That's what I'd really recommend because it's a lot easier to see. But this stuff does work and we are ready to go grab the tractor and get started. So I'll get the drone up in the air for you guys here shortly.
<laughs> so if you try to go too fast, it gets out of hand. Better go back to the slow speed before we mess something up. Got a good thing going here. All right. Must have just came around one of the poles just right. And there's the end. Now that's a beautiful thing. Hey everyone, I know that these fencing videos are not that entertaining. I do understand that. But the purpose of our channel, yes, we want views, we want everyone to see it. And if there's people that aren't interested in the fencing part, I mean, we're just not gonna get as many views on those. But we want to show the full aspect of our farm, right? So if somebody else is wanting to do a livestock farm, whether it's cattle, sheep, goats, horses, whatever it is, right? If you don't buy land that already has fencing on it, you're going to put fencing in or you're going to pay to put fencing in. It's going to cost a lot of money just for materials. So if you pay somebody to do it, it's going to cost even more because now you're paying for their time and their, uh, their skill set. I say that because this, putting all these paddocks in like this, is the equivalent of like the millennial farmer getting a, a, a new John Deere planter, right? It's, it's important for his farm. It makes him more efficient. It makes him more profitable. This is the same concept for me. Having all these paddocks, so if I just had these 50 acres that we let them graze on, if I just let them free graze on all of it, wherever they wanted to go, they're gonna get parasites and they're gonna get them often. And I'm gonna deworm often, probably monthly. So it takes a lot of time to deworm them. The problem with deworming actually isn't the time, and it's really not even the money for the, the medicines. The problem is, is that the more I deworm them, whether I use Valbazin, Dectamax, Safeguard, or, um, oh, I can't think of the other one, but if I use, no matter what I do, right, if, even if I keep rotating them, the parasites on my ground are gonna start building an immunity to that. And then it's gonna get to a point where I can't treat them and get rid of them, and it's gonna start killing livestock. It's gonna start taking, obviously, a huge profit or a huge cost in my end. So having these paddocks is the same concept as, as a grain farmer getting a new piece of equipment that's efficient, right? I'm gonna save time because I'm not gonna be deworming. I simply go out here, I open a gate, they go to that next paddock for five days. All I do is every day I come out, fill water up, kind of check on them, make sure they're doing all right, make sure no predators are getting in and anything like that. And then I turn around and I go back and go to my normal job. So. I'm going to save time in that aspect. I'm going to save money because I'm not buying medicines, uh, the dewormers and stuff like that, and having to keep administering them. I'm also going to end up uh, building an immunity for the animal. So the animal itself is going to fight some of the parasites off. It's not going to fight all of them off. If they get too heavy of a load, that's when the medicines become needed. I want to prevent that. I want the animals to be able to fight them, up, them off on their own by only introducing a low volume of parasites to them, and that's happening by doing rotational grazing. No matter where they go in the world, if they were just wild animals like they were before humans ever domesticated uh, livestock, they would run around everywhere and anywhere and they would eat grass, right? The difference is that they wouldn't be confined to the same uh, ground for long periods of time. They would travel, you know, across states in our case, that's the best way to measure their distance. They would travel a long distance and in that long distance, they would encounter parasites, obviously, but they'd encounter a low volume of them because they'd eat you know, yeah, they're gonna have some, they're gonna defecate out some more eggs, but by the time those eggs hatch, they're long gone. So this is just, like I said, this is a big upgrade for our farm. This is a huge upgrade for our farm. It's gonna make us much more profitable. It's gonna make us much more efficient. Um, I, I don't have a better way to put it. I know it's not exciting. I want it to be exciting for you all, but it's fencing. There's nothing exciting about coming out here and pounding all these in with a post driver. You know, after you see it, 10 times or a thousand times in this case it looks the same and it's not going to be entertaining so i say that though to let you all know stick around there's going to be videos coming up that have equipment in them there's going to be videos coming up that have 
special project in it. I can't tell you what it is yet, but there's going to be more stuff coming. So please stick around. I promise it's going to get uh, it's going to it's going to start changing around here a little bit more. So thank you for for tuning in though. I really appreciate it. If you haven't already, please hit those like buttons. If you like the video, please hit it. It doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't do anything for you um, or take anything from you. What it does is it actually shows me on the analytics what everybody likes, what they like the most of, right? And I'll try to show more of it or go more in depth in it to help others. The other thing it does is it helps share our videos. Um, YouTube will actually start recommending it to other people. The more likes it has, the more comments it has, the more popular it seems. And that's how it, uh, the algorithm works to get other people to see your videos. So please like it, share it, um, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Because I've noticed that there's a lot of people that are watching these videos and they're not subscribed, which, you know, that's fine. I, I understand, you know, but it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. I don't send you a bunch of emails or any of that. All it's going to do is it's going to notify you if I put a new video up. That's it. And it's not even going to be an obnoxious, like, uh, sending you text messages kind of thing. It's just going to show you the next time you log into YouTube. So thank you. God bless. And we'll see you all next video. together Keevan's son Jeremy and this is Keevan here uh, I think we have it figured out and maybe we'll get it out on Sunday so we'll uh we'll either be saying a lot of funny words or very happy